Hello everyone, this is Charles here from Valves and More, an online vintage tube store. And today, in tube lab number 111, we're going to take a look at loose tube bases. What causes them, and how to fix them right. But first, caution everyone. Electronics in tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them and always consult a professional when in doubt. Okay, so loose tube bases are an all too common problem with vintage vacuum tubes. Why is that? Well, vintage tubes use a natural glue called shellac, mixed with some powdered fillers to stick the inside of the base to the glass. This glue was a good choice at the time, but the manufacturers had no way of knowing that decades or even a century later people would still be using these tubes. And over that time, humidity and heat have slowly broken down the shellac glue. This is why you find new old stock, new in box, tubes like this one with a loose base. Let's take a quick look at it. This is one of those nice vintage U.S. Navy boxes, and we've got a 7193 tube on the inside. What's a 7193? Well, it's one of the potential driver tubes for our Yuri monoblock. It's very similar to a 6J5, so that means it's a single triode in that envelope, and it's got these neat double top cap connections. This one in particular was made by National Union and it has a loose base. It's probably not too loose and it's probably actually hard to hear it on camera or see it on camera but anytime you have movement like this it means it's only going to get worse over time and this is something that we would want to repair before sending it out. Let's take a quick look at what's going on inside the base. Apologies about the dog barking in the background, that's just Jordy being a little rambunctious. Here we have a diagram of what it's like inside the tube base. The black outer rectangle is the base itself. The blue inner one is the glass envelope. This down here is the pin that's part of the base, and these are actually hollow. And then this inner portion here is a wire lead that comes out of the glass envelope and gets soldered to the ends of these pins. On the sides, we have the glue and the filler. So if this degrades, the only mechanical connection left is this solder point right here. And I don't think I need to tell you that removing and installing your tube into a socket with that being the only mechanical connection is probably not a good idea and I bet it's going to kill the tube pretty quickly. So best practice whenever you're installing or removing a tube is to insert it and remove it by grasping the base and not the glass. Unfortunately some manufacturers put their bases uh, down below the level of the tops of their amplifiers. They're inset. And that means that whenever you're trying to grasp the base, there's nothing there to grasp. You, you have to grab the glass. That's why we strongly recommend using socket savers or lifters as they're sometimes called. Now I don't have our standard 8-pin one here. This is actually one of our Loctal adapter slash lifters right here but it does the same job and all it does is it gives you essentially an extra base height to work with. It will also save on wear, wear and tear on your uh, amplifier socket. This is a lot easier to replace than the built-in socket that's probably soldered to a board. But we strongly recommend these, especially for those amps where it's really hard to get to the tube base to grasp it to pull a tube out. Okay, 
So let's take a look at the tools we use to fix damaged bases, and I'll walk you through the process that we've developed. First, what we want is some clear shellac. You want it without any additives, and you can find this at most home improvement, hardware stores, things like that. It's still pretty common. Shellac is a great wood finish, and it's still used for that these days. You have to be careful with this though. Shellac in its liquid form is dissolved in a um, in a solvent. This one I think is using ethanol and uh, isopropyl alcohol. So obviously it's flammable, it's going to give off fumes. Always read and follow the directions. Use in a well ventilated area and any time that you have a rag soaked with gas you have to be very careful with it. Uh, depending on what it's soaked in, it could spontaneously combust or it will just put out fumes that aren't good for you. So store them, whenever you're done with them, in a fireproof container outside. Next, we need syringes. These might be hard to find locally, but we ordered a set off of Amazon and they worked out pretty well. This is an 18 gauge syringe. You don't want it to be too small, otherwise it'll be too easy to clog it, and we'd like to be able to reuse these in the future. And I shouldn't have to say it, but obviously this is a puncture hazard. Be careful with these. Treat it as if it were a sharp knife. Speaking of knives, you need yourself a good sharp knife. We like to use these retractable ones, we sell them in the store. They're handy, they're light, they're sharp whenever you have a fresh blade in them. They're great, so that's what we're going to use for this job. You need a heat gun. Now, I haven't tried it yet, but I would not recommend using a large paint stripper heat gun. It's most likely going to be too hot. The directional nozzle is going to be probably too large. This one's fairly small, as you can see. You want something that you can really pinpoint the heat on with and, you know, not melt everything that's in sight. We sell these in the store as well. And they're a great tool, especially for applying heat shrink as well. These are fantastic. For cleanup, we're going to want to use some masking tape. And this isn't exactly for cleanup, but it's going to make the cleanup job a whole lot easier. We're going to wrap the base of the tube in masking tape in a couple of layers and that's going to mean that any drips of the shellac will just come off with the tape and we won't have to worry about using a solvent which could potentially damage the base or the label on it. We're going to use some isopropyl alcohol. I like to use two different bottles. One of them I have specifically marked for doing two base repairs. And this is the one that I use to flush the syringe whenever I'm done the job. That way, the trace amounts of shellac stay in this bottle. It's not going to bother anything else. I can't use this for anything else. So it just stays there. And then I have my standard 50-50 cleaning mix of what was originally 100%, and then I've mixed it with 50% um, distilled water. But you can use any sort of solvent that's like this, it'll work the same way. The last thing you'll want is a rag, which I did have in front of me. Ah, there it is. You'll want a clean, lint-free, preferably cotton rag. Just something for doing a little bit of touch-up cleaning and wiping the syringe free whenever you're done. So let's start this off here. What do we have here? This is a tongue saw. 6SN7GT mouse ear. You can see the mica spacers. That's where it's getting the mouse ear name. And these are great vintage tubes. They're very hard to find. And this one has a very loose base on it. Look at that. If we were to install and remove this using the glass and an amplifier, it wouldn't take long before these leads snapped. So this is going to be the tube that we're going to start repairing today. The first thing we want to do is take our masking tape and you want to peel off enough that you can wrap the base at least twice. 
can't hurt to go a little bit more, so peel off a bit more if you have to. The first layer we're going to put on as flush as possible to the top of the base. So I'm going to start it right there. I'm going to work my way around and make sure it is flattened down to the base. We don't want any drips getting underneath the tape. Now once you're over, once you're overlapping, angle it up a little bit so that you create a little bit of a trough around the tube. This is just going to make the process easier and cleaner. You don't want it too high, so let me bring that back just a little bit. There we go. So there we go. So now we have the base protected, we have the label protected, and any drips that we get from our shellac will get caught by this. Next, we need to get some shellac. Now the first thing you want to do with this is give it a good mixing, probably at least for 30 seconds. Give it a good shake or, or mix it with something uh, physically, like a popsicle stick or something. This one I already shook before we went on camera here. I don't want to subject you to that. If it needs to be mixed though, it's going to look like it's separated. You're going to see a clear layer and then you're going to see a milky layer. We're going to take our syringe and we're just going to fill it up just a little bit. Not a whole lot. This is actually way more than what we need here. We're going to close the shellac, put it aside somewhere where it's not going to get knocked over. Okay. Now the tricky part. You want to use the syringe. I like to angle it so that the, the hole is on the inside. And work your way around the base injecting small amounts of shellac. So let's start here just a little bit. Now the trick here is that you have to do a little bit at a time. If you put too much shellac in, the next step when we use the heat gun is going to make it bubble out and boil all over the place. Ask me how I know that. It's going to make a big mess. There we go. So I've injected a small amount all around the edge here. The next step would be to use the heat gun and angle it down and work your way around the tube. Be careful, it's going to get hot. If you're holding this with your hands, I, I would recommend going down to the pins. This is how I do it here. You can also wear some oven mitts or you can hold this with uh, a clamp of some sort. That would probably make it easier. You can even install this in something that has a base that will hold it vertical and then that way you don't even have to hold onto the tube. You use the heat gun until you see the shellac stop bubbling around all the edges. At that point you know that it's solidified or at least it's gummy enough that it's going to hold. Then you have to repeat that step anywhere between two and four times, sometimes up to five, depends on how bad the base is, but usually four times is more than enough for them. What you want to do is get it set the level of the shellac is just below the level of the base here. You don't want it too high. The higher it gets, the more it's going to bubble, the more mess it's going to make. I'm not going to use the, the heat gun on camera here. It's very loud. But through the magic of television, I did another tube earlier. This is one of the Marconi 6SN7 GTBs. And I did this process earlier on it. So this edge here has been filled in. And the next step that we want to do is scrape off any hardened shellac. You can probably see some on the glass here. And I like to do it like this. I'll grasp the tube from the glass and I'll carefully just work my way along scraping down the glass. It removes pretty easily but it does take a little bit of time to do it cleanly. I'm not going to do the whole thing right now because it'll take a little bit of time. But this is the easiest way to get the shellac off the glass. When you're done with that, you can give it a wipe with the rag and some alcohol and clean up whatever remainder there is there. When you're done with that, it's time to peel off the tape. This has protected the base from any shellac dripping. It's protected the label. 
from any alcohol that you've needed to use to clean up. And it's kept things nice and clean for us. The last little bit that you want to do is cleaning up this very top edge. Now it's not always necessary. You can see it's actually not that bad right here. But if I work my way along, okay, here's a bit of a rougher spot. You just want to scrape it and scrape it back and forth a little bit. I apologize if that's loud on camera or, or annoying. It's a little bit delicate work, but it doesn't take long. And then you can give that another wipe down with the rag, just being careful not to touch the label with it. When you're done all that, you should have a nice solid, look at that, no movement at all, no sound. You should have a nice solid base that should last it until the end of that tube's life. And there we go. The last little bit that you need to do is to clean up. So we're going to get rid of the extra shellac, we're going to put it back in here for later use. And I've been using this tin for a while here and look how much I've actually used. It really doesn't take long, or it doesn't take much. You want to seal this tin tightly. Shellac will degrade in air. Put that away. And then you want to flush out syringe if you ever intend to use it again and we do so I'm gonna pull some of that syringe or pull that fluid up into the syringe and just clear it out a couple of times there we go and then give it a wipe that's good to go for next time And there we have it. That's how we repair bases here. And we found it's the best way, it's the cleanest way. After you're done cleaning up the tubes, it's actually difficult to tell that they've been repaired. Okay, so what's going on over at Melatone Kits? Well, we just got the PCBs in for the GU50 monoblock amplifier. And Dad, right this moment, is testing them to make sure that they work correctly. Once he's verified that they're good, we're going to start sending out emails to our test builders to let them know that the kits are ready to go. So if you're on that list, expect that email soon. We're excited for these going out. They're great amplifiers. In other news, our Black Friday sale has been going strong and have finally slowed down enough uh, for us to get some work done on the kits and to shoot a video like this. Don't forget that the last day of the sale is Sunday, November 27th. Here, let me get the discount card in here. Just use Black Friday 15 at checkout, and that'll get you 15% off everything in the store except for kit amps and the gift cards. And of course, if your order is $150 or more after discount, the shipping is on us, folks. This is Charles from Valves and More, signing off. Cheers, everyone.